Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to the Small Business Briefing presented by the Small Business Association of Michigan. I'm Sarah Miller, and today, uh, Brian Kelly is on vacation, so I have a special co-host. Hi, Sarah. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Alexa Kramer. I am the Director of Government Operations at SBAM. Um, and so really excited to be co-hosting with you today, Sarah. Before we get into it, I do want to thank our sponsor for making this happen. So a big thank you to our sponsor, Marana Group, a data document and distribution company in Kalamazoo. Thanks, Alexa. So today we have two special guests and um, one is our colleague, Sherry Bryan. The other is an SBAM member, Chris Castile. And I'd first like to introduce you to Sherry Bryan. Sherry, welcome to the briefing. Can you please uh, give everyone a, an introduction to yourself? Thank you, Sarah. I'm Sherry Bryan, SBAM's Director of Strategic Partnerships and Certification. Uh, in my strategic partner role, I work with entities that have businesses as members to sponsor their members with a membership to SBAM as part of their membership. This allows their members to take advantage of all of the SBM member benefits. Uh, in my certification role, I assist businesses in getting SBM certified small. This certification can help set their businesses apart in the marketplace, adds another layer of credibility to their name and or their brand, and can provide potential assistance with procurement as well. Thank you, Sherry. And one of those certified members has joined us today Welcome, Chris Castile. Chris, would you please tell us about your business? It's certainly very unique. Well, thank you. Um, my name is Chris Castile. I'm with the New Life Prosthetics and Orthotics. We are a um, medical appliance manufacturer that makes artificial limbs and braces, art, uh, prosthetics and orthotics in uh, the Metro Detroit area. So we have on-site fabrication, um, literally head to toe pediatric to geriatric, uh, medical appliances. We've been in business for about 11 years and uh, we're located in the new center area of Detroit. And Chris, what made you go into this line of business? Uh, I've been an amputee for 35 years, uh, or just about 35 years. Uh, I had a full career in manufacturing and um, at the, the first turn, uh, downturn in uh, 2001, I basically uh, found myself unemployed and have to, had to figure out what I was gonna do with my, my manufacturing skills. And so I ended up going back to school. Uh, my wife and I started a new life prosthetics and orthotics. And uh, it's been, I guess we've been in business now for 11 years. That's fantastic. How many people are on your team? So we have uh, five, five and a half uh, people that are with us uh, on a weekly basis. That's fantastic. So Chris, tell us how you originally heard about the SBAM certification program. So I have to be very honest. My wife found it on the website. Uh, she couldn't be here today, so I'm kind of filling in for that. Um, that that's pretty much it. I think it was the, the website. That's great. And so I won't ask you why you decided to get certified, but why did your, why did your wife take that step and uh, become certified small? So we, we talked about it, and I guess that was part of it, to, to legitimize our business. Um, we had seen it in the past that uh, it did help out with some of the contracting opportunities, and we really wanted to pr promote our business more uh, to other, other small businesses. Fantastic. And did you find the process easy to use? So I'm told it is extremely easy, uh, very simple, and uh, very cost-effective. All right. Well, thank you. Those were definitely a little, you know, some plugs that we had to put in there. But one more thing I wanted to ask you is how you're using the certification today. What benefits are you seeing from it? So we, we've been referencing any time that we're, we're seeking a, a bidding uh, opportunity, you know, whether it's from the, like the city of Detroit on a state or, uh, or even the federal level. Um, having, having that opportunity to, to reach out for federal contracts, um, applying for grants, Again, networking, we, we definitely use it on our, our social media and our website platforms just to, again, add legitimacy and, and basically let everybody know that we are a small, small business and, you know, by Michigan. We love that. Definitely want to support our local economy. Chris, where can people find out more about you and a new prosthetics? So uh, a quick Google search of Detroit prosthetics will, will bring us right to your, our, our website. So it's a new life, Pando, prosthetics and orthotics. 
or you know, there's always a phone number at 313-870-9610 so we can schedule an appointment and help somebody out. Fantastic. And what's what's next for your team? Do you have any uh, big goals or plans for 22? So, you know, this year has started out very good. You know, last year was one of our worst years. This one looks like it might be one of our best. We're really, do, we're just trying to do a little bit more marketing. Uh, also, you know, help out as many people as we can, both from the, um, the underhoused and underinsured. Uh, I, I have a feeling towards the end of the year, we're going to see a lot of uh, Ukrainian refugees. Oh, yes, definitely. You know, we featured your business in our Focus magazine a couple of years ago. So we've definitely been following you all as members and look forward to seeing what you do in the future. So thank you so much for taking time today and, uh, and joining the briefing. Well, thank you. Have a great day. Thanks, Chris. So Sherry, Chris certainly makes it sound like it's easy enough to get certified, but can you just walk through how the process works and share a little bit about how others who might be interested could take advantage of this opportunity? Absolutely. To learn more about the certification process, you can visit www.sbam.org and then find small business certification under the member benefits tab. Uh, you will want to uh, have some documents collected. You'll need a copy of your articles of incorporation and then any tax document uh, that shows your gross annual revenue for the past three years. But then once you do that, you can get right on there and uh, click on purchase that application and you'll jump you right in there and you can uh, go ahead and get that over there to me. And of course, if you have any other questions at all, you can contact me directly at 517-712-8343 and I am more than happy to help you out. All right, Sherry, one last question. This is... Uh should be a pretty easy one for you. What are the criteria for somebody to be certified small? Okay, you must be domiciled in the state of Michigan and you have to have fewer than 500 employees and less than 25 million in gross revenue. All right, thank you, Sherry. And like Sherry said, you can find out more on our website um, you can reach out to Sherry directly or email us at sbam at sbam.org. So I hope you'll consider getting small business certified. It really can set your business apart in the marketplace. All right, so Alexa, this is usually data Monday, but we're gonna put a pin in that and let Brian cover two weeks worth of data when he returns next Monday. But we do have a few updates on the government relations front. Um, a new poll is out, uh, a gubernatorial poll, and some of the Republican candidates are separating from the field. So what's the latest? Yes, Sarah, we will certainly hold off on data Monday until Brian returns, but we do have a little bit of data on um, election season. So like you said, uh, we're getting closer to the filing deadline. Our filing deadline is April 19th. So we're starting to see a lot of people get kind of a better understanding of the field and what candidates they prefer. Um, and so if we kind of go back to, the, to last month in February, there was a poll back then of the um, Republican candidates for governor and just kind of seeing at that time where folks were, were landing. And at that time, um, the former Detroit police chief, James Craig came out with 33%. Um, Perry Johnson was at just 3% and Garrett Saldana was at 5%. Um, an overwhelming portion of it, 37% uh, of folks responded that they were undecided at that point. Fast forward to just last month, a new survey was conducted from um, March 29th to March 31st, so the very end of March. And this had um, some new findings that I think were pretty interesting. Uh, again, the former Detroit police chief coming out on top, James Craig, uh, secured 34.4% of the vote. But we did see Perry Johnson come in second, um, and he was just over 16% of the vote. Um, Garrett Saldano came in third with 14.7%, um, and then was followed by Ryan Kelly with just under 7%, and Tudor Dixon with 2.6%. Um, and then Kevin Rinke and Mike Brown, both at that 2.3% uh, 
Um, so that left a total of 12.4% of likely GOP primary voters saying that they are undecided. And so that's an important note that this was a pool of likely GOP primary voters. Um, and so kind of comparing the two, there was only a, a month in between really. Um, but just, just comparing the two, we saw James Craig just creep up a little bit again from 33 to 34.4%. Um, but I think the, the biggest um, shocker, I, I think, which was really surprising was to see how far Perry Johnson kind of jumped from what was 3% back in that February pool to uh, just over 16%. Um, I think that that was a pretty, pretty impressive jump and really put him into second place. And then Garrett Saldano, again, in February, having 5% of the vote, really jumping to 14.7%. And then we also saw that undecided vote was shrinking from that 37% down to um, just over 12%. So again, we're getting closer to that filing deadline. Folks are starting to get a better understanding of the candidates. They're starting to see more ads. Um, I think that that's probably how Perry Johnson made such an incredible jump. Um, I think that this probably factored in his, his big Super Bowl ad. He's, he's kind of coining himself of, as the quality guru and um, putting ads out there and funding himself. And so I think people are starting to see a little bit more of Perry Johnson. And so um, we, we saw from those latest poll, James Craig, Perry Johnson, and Garrett Saldano kind of stepping out from the, the pack of the GOP candidates for governor as kind of the best front runners. So that's the latest and greatest. I think that these things are, are ever changing. Um, so we'll certainly see what future polls hold. Name recognition certainly helps in these early, early days. And we do have quite a bit of time left before the primary, but definitely anxious to see how this one all plays out. Um, so the Michigan Supreme Court recently rejected the Attorney General's request to reconsider the 2020 decision to strike down the Riot Act. So would you remind everybody what the Riot, Riot Act is, was, and how Governor Whitmer used it, and then what this means going forward? Sure. So um, a little bit of background for those that aren't familiar or it just seems like so long ago because it was back in October of 2020. Um, so although no one wants to go back there, if we go back to October 2020, you may remember that the support, uh, Supreme Court held that the 1945 uh, Emergency Powers of the Governor Act, also known as the Riot Act, violated the Constitution because it indefinitely delegates legislative power to the executive branch. And so this act was really used to justify, again, back in the heat of the pandemic, the slew of executive orders that Governor Whitmer um, put out. So this was the act that was kind of looked to as a, the, the channel in which she could do it. So um, back again in October 2020, Supreme Court held that that, was, that act was unconstitutional. So then fast forward to just this past February, Attorney General Dana Nessel appealed that court ruling to the Michigan Court of Appeals and then a separate filing to the Michigan Supreme Court. And so the Michigan Supreme Court just announced last week that, the, that they denied the Attorney General's request to appeal. So essentially holding that that act is un, uh, unconstitutional. What was interesting about this and the, and the reason that we, we bring it up and which was honestly worrisome was that the makeup of our Supreme Court today looks very different than it did in October, 2020. It was a conservative led Supreme Court back in, in October of 2020 and now our makeup is a little bit more left leaning than it was then. So when this appeal took place back in February when the Attorney General um, really announced that this, this appeal was going to take place in February, there was an interest if, if a different makeup would um, kind of make a difference of how the, the, the court viewed the Riot Act, right? And so we did see that even with a different makeup, the court stands by their ruling from back in 2020. All right. So last week on Thursday, the Growing My Business grant program officially closed. Have you heard any updates from the Michigan Department of Treasury? 
Sure. So um, as uh, just a little bit of background, and I'm sure you've been hearing it from us, we have been um, shouting it from the rooftop as soon as this grant was uh, live. But at the very end, and we've talked about this before on the briefing, but at the very end of last year, um, there was some funds set aside for this grant program that was really targeted toward businesses who were shut down during, during the pandemic. And it was really a sign that, um, you know, business was still struggling. And so there was going to be these grant offerings to businesses, depending on their decline in sales from 2019 to 2020. There were nine different sorts of business eligibility criteria that businesses could apply for. So since it opened in early March, we have been pushing it out. Uh, that grant did close as of March 31st. And so um, we are now in the grant review period. Um, I have been in constant communication with the Michigan Department of Treasury. The Treasury uh, Department was kind of overseeing this grant process, kind of putting the application together, going through the application, reviewing it, and then also sending out grants, all kind of housed within the Michigan Department of Treasury. And I've been in constant communication with them and just chatted with them today. I did hear that um, if because they're in the grant review process, they might be reaching out to folks that did apply. So if they need addi additional information regarding your application, they will be reaching out to you, whether it's by email or just a simple phone call. So if you get an email or a, a, a call from the Michigan Department of Treasury, please respond to it. Please look, look at it. They are likely just needing more information for your application. And the notifications regarding the grant awards are expected um, early this summer, and then payments will be distributed by July 1st. So again, just a heads up that that's kind of the timeline that they're expecting. Um, the timeline that they put forth um, earlier in the application as far as setting up the application and getting um, the application live, they were true to their timeline. So I'm taking this as they're going to be true to that July 1 getting money out the door. Um, but again, if you see some sort of communication from the Michigan Department of Treasury and you applied for this grant, please respond to it. They are just needing um, a little bit more information from you in order to get you your grant dollars. Good advice. You definitely don't want to leave that money on the table if it's available to you. Um, all right, Alexa, we've talked a lot about tax relief. Um, can you give us an update on the conversation happening around various uh, proposals? Sure, there is just a lot going on. I know that we've been talking about the different sorts of proposals out there for um, the last several weeks now. Um, but one thing that, that did just happen, just last week, the governor signed the $4.8 billion dollar supplemental that did include some SBAM wins. If you um, subscribe, I don't know if that's the correct word, maybe it's not, but subscribe to the, hey Alexa, what's happening in Lansing? Um, you will see that that was one of the articles that we, uh, we shared having that $4.8 billion supplemental signed with the SBAM wins like dollars for broadband expansion and also a deposit into our unemployment compensation fund. So if you're not subscribe to the Hey Alexa, what's happening in Lansing. Here's a shameless plug to get subscribed. Um, but anyway, when, when the governor was signing that, after she signed, um, the governor did bring up tax relief. Um, I, I know that we, we talked about all of these, these proposals floating out there between the administration, the legislature, and kind of what's going to be hashed out. The governor did take this time to really talk about tax relief and talk about and bring up some of the proposals that she unveiled at the last state of the state, including the earned income tax credit, which I know is something that the administration is really looking at and the legislature is looking at as well. So I think that that was really um, a good time to kind of bring out some tax relief options that both the administration and the legislature favor. Um, the earned income tax credit we've talked about before, but kind of the opposite of unemployment, right? So this is a tax credit for your earned income. So it's essentially giving a tax credit to folks that are on the lower uh, end of our wage earners. And so she talked about the earned income tax credit. She talked about some other tax proposals, um, but I think that that was a really good sign. And again, kind of justifying to us that there is going to be something 
that does shake out. We're just not quite sure what the legislature and the administration are going to come to an agreement on. So as the budget conversations continue, as the legislators get back from their spring break, legislators were on spring break um, last week and then also this week. So they will be getting back um, next Tuesday. I'm sure that there will be more to report on um, from what comes with from all of these proposals so we can expect something to happen on the tax front. We will be heavily engaged in, in this as we always are on tax conversations, making sure that the small business voice is heard, working with our other partners in the business community to make sure our small business voices are, are heard during these tax relief conversations. All right, thank you for the update. We are gonna end a little bit early today, but Alexa, would you do us a favor and preview our guest for Thursday's show? Sure, I'm really excited about Thursday's show. So on Thursday, we will be joined by my friend, Darren Kalina with Business Leaders United. So to kind of give some background, National Skills Coalition is a national organization that kind of focuses on both uh, on workforce policy from both an employer front and an employee front. So they have really two legs within the National Skills Coalition. They have the, um, the employee front is SkillSpan, um, and then they have an employer front called the Business Leaders United. And so Jaren Kalina, a good friend who I used to work with back in West Michigan, she is now kind of the director of Business Leaders um, United and kind of oversees that branch of National Skills Coalition. And so what they're doing is they're going to have, um, like they usually do, an uh, annual uh, Blue on the Hill is what it's called, the Business Leaders United BLU Blue on the Hill. Um, that is tomorrow and Wednesday. I will be in D.C. at that conference tomorrow and Wednesday talking about some really great workforce policy. A lot of their, um, a lot of what National Skills Coalition and Business Leaders United, uh, when they talk about workforce, it ha does have that federal angle, which I think is a very exciting opportunity for SBAM to be engaged in those conversations, but they also do work really closely with different states. Um, they have 15, I believe, um, affiliate states across the nation. Michigan is one of them, and so we do, uh, we do really enjoy a great relationship with the National Skills Coalition, the Business Leaders United, whole affiliate team, and so I'm really looking forward to the conversations happening um, on uh, tomorrow and Wednesday at the conference. All tomorrow will be kind of a full conference day uh, workforce policy um, workshops and talking with a lot of other states. And I love to learn from other states. And then on, um, on Wednesday, we will be having a, a slew of, of meetings on the Hill. So I'll be meeting with a bunch of the Michigan um, delegation and um, kind of talking about our workforce needs, our talent needs. And again, really bringing that small business voice uh, to the Hill. So it's a really exciting opportunity. On Thursday, Jaron will be with us. Jaron and I will kind of debrief from the conference. So you'll get to hear the latest and greatest from what National Skills Coalition is doing, what Business Leaders United is doing, and all of the amazing topics that we, uh, we talked about at, uh, at the conference. So I'm really looking forward to it. And uh, we'll be covering it all on Thursday. So you're not going to want to miss Thursday. All right. We'll have Alexa's report from D.C. and our guest on Thursday. Have a wonderful week. Alexa, safe travels to D.C. And we'll see you back here on Thursday. See you guys.